All right, so today what we're going to talk about is we're going to get into accuracy, estimation, approximation, and exact numbers. So I gave you your notes page, so we're going to go through and fill out those notes page, and I'm going to give you some examples of how this works. So the first thing we're going to talk about is exact numbers. So up at the top, you should see where it says exact numbers. Now, we're not going to write anything beside exact numbers, but we are going to drop down where it says 1. And beside number 1, I want you to write down any number obtained by a counting process. All right, any number obtained by a counting process. So that basically means I count things. I go around the classroom, I count how many students are in the classroom, and I tell how many there are exactly. Okay, I look over at my calculators and I say there's 20 calculators because I counted the number of calculators and that's how many calculators there are. That would be an exact number. I know how many there are, and I tell you how many there are because I know how many. Okay? Another example, and you can write this down on it next to example. Next to example, we're going to write down 60 students in a class. Sixty students in a class, and in this case, the number would be exactly 60 students because we count how many students we have. We go one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 60, and we know that 60 students are in the class. So we know how many there are, and we say how many we are, so that's an exact number. Now, exact numbers can be have really two definitions. We could have one, or next to number two, you can write down any number given by definition. That's the definition for this as well. Any number given by definition. Any number given by definition. So, an example of this. Any number given by definition, an example for this would be if we were looking at a conversion. Let's say the conversion was one hour is equal to sixty minutes. In this conversion, we know that 60 is an exact number. 60 is going to be the exact number because by definition, it tells me that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. I know for a fact that 60 minutes is going to be equal to one hour. Therefore, 60 minutes would be an exact number in this problem. So, with exact numbers, you got to keep in mind we're looking for two things. We're looking for any number obtained by the counting process or any number given by definition. So those are two easy definitions for exact numbers. Next, we're going to look at approximation. So go ahead, up at the top, identify where approximation is. So that's going to be approximation. And next to approximation, we're only going to have one definition for this. So next to number one, go ahead and write down represents. This one's a little longer. So represents the value of a number. when the exact value cannot be determined. All 
All right, so the definition for an approximation is represent, it's a number, it's when we represent the value of a number when the exact value cannot be determined. This is also what we determine or call a guess. All right, a lot of people say, I'm guessing that's the number, or I'm guessing this is the value. Okay, so a lot of times with approximations, we're basically going to guess to determine the number value because we do not know the number value. Now, a couple examples that I like to use, if I look around the room, I look around this classroom, I know that there's approximately 30 desks, all right? Now, I don't know how many desks are in here exactly, but I know there's approximately 30. I'm taking a guess on that. I'm saying that I don't know how many desks are in here, but to me, it looks like there are 30. Another example, and this example will hit a little closer to home for you, an example of this would be the distance between Rome and Cartersville. The distance between Rome and Cartersville, and we're going to say that the distance is 20 miles. That would be an example. So this would be an example of an approximation. The distance between Rome and Cartersville is 20 miles. Now, here's the thing. I don't know how far it is from here to Cartersville, but what I'm making an approximation about, or I'm guessing here, is that there are approximately 20 miles between here and between here and Cartersville. Now, could there be more miles? Yes, all right? If we looked it up, there may be more miles. Could there be less miles? Yes. yes. So understand, the distance between Rome and Cartersville isn't necessarily 20 miles, but what I do is I make a guess that it's 20 miles based on the knowledge that I have, okay? I don't know how far it is, but I know approximately how far it will be, okay? But like I said, with 20 miles, we're looking for the approximate distance, all right? We're looking for something that might be a little more, a little less, but 20 is where we consider it to be, just based off of guessing. All right, so with approximation, we have our approximation down. So the next one we're going to look at is estimation. Estimation. And it should be written down for you at the top of your, or on your, about middle ways on your page there. So in estimation, it says when you know the exact number, so this is going to go beside number one, when you know The exact number but choose to round the number to make the calculation easier. All right, so a little bit of a long definition here. Estimation is when you know the exact number, but you choose to round the number to make the calculation easier. So this is rounding. So an example of this, and the example I like to use, is that in Rome, Georgia, we know the number of people in Rome, Georgia, all right? We know that there are exactly, all right, in Rome, Georgia, there are exactly 36,303 people. All right, so I'm telling you the exact number. So here is how the approximation or estimation works. To estimate this number, we would rather say instead of 36,303 people, we would rather round it to 400 or 40,000. Okay, 
because 40,000 is just a rounded number. We rounded it up here. You could round this to 40,000. You could round this to 36,000. You could round this to 37,000. Those would be all examples of estimations. We know, we already know how many people there are. But what we choose to do to make calculations easier is to round the number to the nearest whole number or nearest thousand or nearest uh, 10,000, whatever the case is, to make the calculation easier for us to understand. I tend to do this every now and then with problems, especially when I don't want to say the number. Like if I have the number 1,337,500 on the board, I would just say, let's multiply 1 million times this number times this number so that you can understand which number I'm talking about. But I round it to make our calculation, make the words of it a lot easier for us to do. So with estimations, we also have estimations we work with. This would be your notes for estimation. And then the last thing, this is going to be the easiest one, is accuracy. So down at the bottom, we have the word accuracy. And for number one on accuracy, we're going to write down the definition accuracy of an approximate number is judged by the number of significant digits. Oh man, I misspelled digits. digits. There we go. Now it's right. All right, so accuracy of an approximate number is judged by the number of significant digits. Now, what I mean by this is, say, in our example down here at the bottom, let's say we have person one, and let's say I have person two, and I tell each person to measure something. So whatever they measure, they measure it out, and let's say person one says, oh, that's 4.63 centimeters. And then person two measures it and says, no, it's 4.6 even. So it's so 4.6 centimeters. When we look at these two people's uh, measurements, to determine which one is the most accurate, we want to look for the one that has the most decimal places. So looking between person one and person two, which one is the most accurate here? Person one. Because person one, if we notice here, has one, two decimal places. Person two only has one decimal place. So which one has the most significant digits or the most decimal places will be the correct answer for accuracy. All right, if you have any questions, you need to look back over this. Feel free to rewind it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.